am delighted to welcome to Mosh Talks, Mr. John Dyer Baisley. Mate, how has lockdown been for you? I don't like, I, just for record, we were just talking before this interview started about this is the first one we've ever done live and I'm shitting myself. I think that's why I got that applause. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's the pandemic been? Yeah, Dude, how's it been for you? Blast. It's a blast. Right? It's the so most much. fun ever. Yeah. I mean, have you been creative? During it, I think is why I was asking that because with this downtime and how much it sucked to be in a band, have you been keeping creative to kind of stay sane? Uh, yeah, I've been doing everything. Pretty much everything I do is to stay sane. You know, <laughs> uh, it. You know, like like for, for us, I, I'll, I'll be. I'll get through this quickly, but like we had. An entire year of tours planned uh, that we're about to that we're kicking out kicking off. I think two weeks after w the lockdown happened, right? Right. So we we'd spent we'd spent the whole first month and a half of uh, of 2020 preparing to go to Australia, Japan, New Zealand to come back do a full U.S. tour with uh, against me uh, to turn right around after at the end of that and head over to Europe and do uh, in, in UK and do festivals all summer long. Uh, so speaking to you at this point, mm. those tours have all happened or they, they should have all happened, you know? So yeah. at least the very least, at the very least, I'm now in a position, I'm in a time in, uh, in my life where I'm not checking to see what, where I should be today, you know, like, oh, yeah. well, we should be in Paco today. Oh, well, that's great. Cause I'm just in my living room again, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, th this year has been a challenge. Um, and I feel like. I shouldn't even shouldn't even say that because it's been a challenge for everybody. You know, it's been it's been yeah. really difficult, and we had we learned very very quickly that um, things were going to start feeling dark and not. We were we were we started to get our anxiety level started to really peak shortly after the isolation time happened, and uh, as soon like as soon as we realized that we weren't talking about two months. We weren't talking about six months, 12 months, yeah. likely the 18 plus uh, realm. As soon as as soon as that was apparent to us, we stopped moping about how we weren't going to tour mm. and we got straight to business. Well, not to business. We got straight to creativity. Yeah. We got straight to music, you know, and we for, for the first time in the history of the band, we have weekly meetings to discuss things. We try to give ourselves weekly deadlines to present new ideas and new songs, uh, and so I'm. While everything has been a relative nightmare, otherwise, we've uh, increased the speed at which we work like tenfold, and so, I mean, all we've done is since March, all we've done is write music, and uh, we've got hours and hours worth of. Music that that you know, like like for instance, like I'm say, I'll say like, oh hey, I wrote a song today. That means that I wrote, I wrote a bunch of parts, and you yeah. know, Gina, it's Gina wrote a bunch of parts. Seb, Nick, the whole band will, uh, you know, we've been generating ideas and and submitting songs to one another all year long. We have only just uh, in the past week or two begun to play music as a four piece again, and that's been pretty fantastic, you know. Mm. It's been it, but it took us up until uh, two and a half weeks ago to get four of us into the same room, because geographically we have some distance. You know, like yeah. uh, Gina, Gina and I live here in Philadelphia. Nick and Sebastian in the rhythm section live up in New York, uh, and while that's a two-hour drive, it's it might as well, you know, it might as well yeah. be a cross thing, because the amount of preparation uh, and the amount of logistics that go into simply picking two human beings up and, and bringing them down to share your home and share your studio and share your livelihood for any period of time it, it, it takes it takes a lot of time you know the, mm. the testing thing and the being careful you know when you drive up to new york to pick somebody up uh again it's a two-hour trip up and you have to think about things like where uh i gotta get gas before i go i got i can't i gotta piss before i go you know i hope i didn't yeah. get too much coffee this morning like Things like that, uh, you know, not to be too crude about it, but like, no, no, no. those are all of a sudden new things that have to be taken into consideration 
in a very, very serious way, uh, like in the most serious way, so that we are professionally responsible to one another and and responsible to our state, our nation, and our species. You know, it's like yeah. it's the the scale that you have to think in order to make simple things happen now is overwhelming and i understand why so many people are fucking it up yeah because yeah. it's it requires a massive amount of brain power and that's a, that's not an excuse for fucking it up it's mm. just that when we've made these like small errors like for instance uh we had a power outage in my house for about a week during this pandemic which is right. which just ima imagine i got a family like no power for a week Fuck, so, and anyway, anyway, that's that would that would be a tangent. I would tell that whole story, but yeah. the way it was like, I was, I, I, you know, I got to, I, we were all, me and all my neighbors were out in the, uh, you know, in our in the middle of the road because it was it was like a heat. There was a heat wave and the humidity was a hundred percent. And uh, I don't want to do the Celsius conversion because I was forgetting yeah. it's thirty. <laughs> it's all right. I'm I'm in LA now, so I I, pl I play by your rules. <laughs> okay. okay. So anyway, um, oh, that's true. Yeah, um, I shook my neighbor's hand. Just like I was like, "Oh, it's nice to meet you." I shook their hand, and this this would have been in June. And as soon as I did, I was like, "Ah, not Fuck. allowed to do that anymore." Yeah, not allowed to do that anymore. Um, and so you know, it's like how many lessons, how many of those lessons have we all had to learn this year? And then when we when you have to apply it to more than just yourself and your, you know, like significant other when you have when it's not just you and your partner they're looking out for each other when all of a sudden when we ban when we have a rehearsal as a band we're looking at i have to look out not only for me and my family and my three bandmates and friends but also the people in their lives and you know this is an industry that that i'm in that when the touring season is on it's close personal contact with thousands of relative strangers every day. Yeah. And so that acclimating to that new those new strictures has been has been difficult because my all of my um, tendencies are to go for going for a hug, going for a handshake, to speak to somebody face to face. I'm not great on phone calls. I hate them. I'm not great on Skype calls or Zoom calls. I hate them. I'm not. not I like, <laughs> so I worked out. Same as like, but but like, yeah. like I don't. I don't have a particularly easy time catching up with people that I know and care gotcha. about by the phone. I'm. I'm. Gotcha. I definitely have uh, have become more of a face to face person, and so now I'm. I've had to re-examine that and reconsider that and make some changes. And there, these are hard changes to implement in a routine, regular way. Mm. You know. It's easy yeah. to be safe for a day, but you know, yeah, play in front of people. I play in front of an audience, dude. Like that's that's what I do, and <laughs> I, I don't get to do that anymore. And so, like, typically my year is about you know seventy five percent on the road and doing this extremely public facing thing, and then the other twenty five to fifty percent, depending on how the year is going, I'm a hermit. I'm by myself. I don't leave the house. I don't do. I don't. I don't have like an active social life. Because touring so much, and mm. when I come home, it's just me and my private life, and so I'm good at that. But I'm only good at that because I'm always about to go out on another adventure. Yeah, the adventures are long; they take me all over the place. It's the most exciting thing to be able to travel and see new people and experience new things and play your play your music with passion and energy in front of crowds who it get enthusiastic and make you play better and you know enrich the experience of touring as it is and now that's I, who knows when that comes back and what it looks like when it comes back so mm -hmm. that you know that for me is like it's a hard personal adjustment for sure and then for the band it's you know we, we, you just have to think all the time can i really. ask can i ask when you boil that up and what it's done to the to the psyche of all of us i know exactly what you're talking about i'll tell you a story like very briefly um there's a guy who's the doorman on in, in my apartment building and i see him every day and he goes how are you and i'm like good man good and oh, after yeah. after about two weeks of it all he went how are you and i went you know, you know, and he went, there you go. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. So the thing I have to ask someone like yourself is 
how does this affect your art? Has this affected your writing? Like, the, your life has taken the drastic change that you're, what you're talking about. Well, now that you're writing and now that you're in a more prolific zone than you have because of these meetings and things like that, have you, find, have you found the fucking world has uh, affected what's coming out when you're writing? Yeah, I mean, of, of course. This, the simple answer is yes, of course. And I'm fairly accustomed to writing and being most creative in times of the uh, in the most the more turbulent times of my life and i've had you know several of them that people you know people are more or less aware of who are, who are fans of the band of course it when you're when you're struggling with something and you have a creative outlet that creative outlet tends to flourish and not not that not that i would ever willingly embrace turbulence in order to be more fluid creatively but it certainly has that effect when you're forced into it and so the, I, I think this year has been been really no different this year has been some mm, fresh hell for uh for everyone and i feel fortunate that i have an outlet to process those feelings and those experiences and to turn them into something that you know something i call like writing music's you're creating something where once there was nothing and yeah. you're putting your feelings into these nonverbal sounds and tones and textures. And so in that regard, it's, 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 it's easy, but maintaining the, you know, maintaining a, a healthy existence in the midst of all this, when there, when there's no, sh there's no support, there's no support structure like there had been in the past mm. because I'm not the only one going through this. It's not like I'm having a bad day. And so I call my friend who's not having a bad day and say, Hey man, can you talk to me so we feel better? No, I call these people. They're going through the same shit. And it's, and sometimes, you know, there's yeah. we're all down here. Yeah. We're just sort of at very, we're, we're, we're operating in the, the lower levels of the well, you know what I mean? Yeah. My, my <laughs> life's interviewing musicians and going, how are you? Like during this, well, uh, everything that I know is de is currently dead. That's how I am. Like I hear you, man. And so I, I think it's you know I think it it presents challenges on a nearly daily basis or nearly momentary basis, and I feel pretty upbeat today. I feel pretty good, honestly. Awesome. Like I, I, I'm I have nothing but uh, a healthy respect for a positive future, yeah. right? That's excellent. A little vagueness there, but like, yeah, yeah of but course. Like, thing, things can certainly go up from here, and they can't go much further down. So, you know, I just call it call a spade a spade. Like, we're it, we're we're all in a compromised situation, and for many of us, there's a lot more space above us than there is below. So that's that's good because it means we have more or less we have one direction to go, and I like yeah. I'm I, I like that. Um, but that you know, everybody everybody that I know will has agreed with this statement. It's not like that every day. There are there's days where finding the motivation and finding the spirit of life that I need in order to be productive and healthy and creative isn't there. Mm. And it's in those days where I feel the most fortunate that I have, uh, you know, six hundred guitars laying around me. Because there's something very satisfying to uh, accessing that those 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 deep feelings of frustration and and, and confusion and sadness and pain and uh, and anger and disillusionment and to take those things and then say okay well I've got this I have this process and I have these tools that I can use where I can filter that stuff and distill it down until until but by the end I've got something that doesn't have all of that, something that's yeah. like, and I can learn from something that I can build on and something that, you know, if I do it right, it can be, it can be a beautiful thing to listen to. And still it exhibits all of those symptoms of frustration and all those, all those, uh, worldwide ills, ill omens that, that are, you know, crossing my transom each day. And, um, you know, again, so again, I feel fortunate that I have it. And I would be remiss if I didn't admit that some some days are, are extremely difficult, uh, because as you well know, we exist and operate in a profession that has, on its best days, 
has very little security and has yeah. very little predictability. For real. And that we're in its absolute worst days. I mean, you can, there are certain, you know, I think there are certain professions that are doing okay. There are certain professions that are doing well. There are certain professions that are just, we're the bottom. Musicians, yeah. people in an entertainment based, ticketed, attendance, necessary uh, field. Um, and I thought, I thought we were. I thought we were going to share this in common with sports, but sports did a great job of mm. picking themselves up by their bootstraps. They've got the infrastructure, they got the money, and they got the attention to make something really great out of this right now and to say something with it. And I'm just wondering, do like we as musicians and as artists, we're typically in that situation. I mean, it, it's it's like it's it's obligatory for us to take what to to absorb the experience around ourselves and to tell it like we see it or to exp or, or just to tell our story or to try and uh, approach it and engage it and challenge people's assumptions assumptions or the you know make people think about it or just give people some straight up release from it mm. um, and right now we're you know we're we're hobbled we're uh, James Kahn in misery you know like <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, and who know who knows when when and where and and in what fashion this whole thing comes back for us but i can say this i the baroness has, has um always been a live band I and mean, we've always we've been saying it since day 1 and we put our money where our mouth is there it's it's about the touring experience it's about the live experience it's about being in front of people it's about having that connection it's not mm. about me playing music for you it's about you being part of the music that I'm playing so that I can feel it a little bit more so that I mean it more and then then we we both you know we as a band and then you as you know the audience at large like we combine our forces and make something that's bigger than bigger and better than either of our expectations and I, I think that's that's like the beauty of playing music. I, I if I wanted to be a studio musician, I would have had to try a whole lot harder to learn my instrument, mm. uh, and I would have had to have a totally different mentality. But but for me, the sustenance is the adventure. It's the travel. It's the you know it is the the every day waking up somewhere new, meeting new people, and getting it you know just absorbing culture, absorbing uh, experience in in that way. And that's not the case right now. So. Um, you know, we're, I think we're just doing the best to take what we've got and make something of it. I, I think that takes us neatly to the Golden Grey stream because that is the the current future, right? Like I've been involved with. I was the host for when Trivium did their pre show. Their show. I was the host on that. That did twelve thousand tickets. Like yeah. tomorrow, there's Behemoth doing this like immersive cinematic experience. Like, have you caught up with any of the streams, yeah, John? Of course, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. So I missed, I missed the Trivium one when it was on. I missed, I think Clutch did a really great one. Yes, I've seen, fuck I've yeah. seen footage of it. Code Orange did a really great yes, one. Yes, um, and the Unplugged. You know, with, uh, with us, uh, we were, you know, I think the situation that we're in this year is, it's just, it's been a little, uh, it's been... It's, the work has been in keeping up with what's going on because we, we've had to change our mentality several times. Like I said, when, when the pandemic first hit, uh, it seemed really apparent for us to just buckle down, keep your head low. Like I was, I was getting, I, I think at that point, I was, you know, around the time the year ended and I've been on tour all last year. Like I just wanted to take a break from social media, from, uh, from like facing the public as they call it now. I, I yeah. just didn't, you know, I'm just like, eh. I need to get back to just being a musician and an artist, and I need to, I need to, I need to focus my attention where it really needs to be, which is in the act of creation. Uh, and this is this is a you know when the tours all folded up, and so we really we really dedicated ourselves to. It. I mean, we spent we have written so much music and we spent so much time doing it that when the streaming idea came up, we then had to like immediately reverse course, and it. It, as I said, it brought some of the some new things to light for us as a band that we've things we've never had to struggle with before because they weren't ever it would never would have been a struggle. Things like that two hour distance between our rhythm section and yeah. Gina, and, and that was never a thing I ever had to think about before, but it really prevented us from 
that and the testing and the you know watching the numbers and you know tracking the data on the on uh, the corona the, the COVID numbers throughout the year. Yeah. I mean, it really I, it really settled in on us because we live in major metropolitan areas that weren't doing well, that really, really weren't doing well. Like New York and Philadelphia, earlier this year especially, yeah. really were hot spots and epicenters. So it seemed wildly irresponsible to try to force any kind of rehearsals or any kind of writing sessions in, into being. So we really we really got entrenched in, a, uh, in this, in the situation where the four of us have our, have personal recording setups in our home studios and we're sharing files and then all of a sudden the streaming thing came up and we wanted to get to it quickly uh, and there were some there were some testing snafus that ended up forcing our rehearsals back two weeks and uh, and we decided we, we decided to play a whole album which you've never done before yeah that's yeah it was never, a ask. we never done sequence so we decided to, we, we really like bitten off like these very um, complex things uh, and we're, we've worked as hard as we can over the past two weeks to get this, get everything up and running. But the, di the distance does make it difficult, you know. And the fact that we're going to pull this thing off with four band and one sound guy, and we're going to do everything ourselves, like that makes this difficult. Like I think the, I think I was really impressed by the Trivium thing because I think they partnered with like Full Sail or something. They, they did, yes, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing facility to do it at. Yeah. Um, we're opting for a, a far scrappier, more kind of DIY situation, which is we're going to be running a production ourselves right. while we're playing. It's which is, I mean, that's all in genius. No pressure, John. <laughs> yeah, like, Gina, Gina is going to be our LD for the show. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> and because because we're because we we've really committed ourselves to playing the entire record, and there's some songs on that on, on all of our records. There there tend to be a couple a handful of songs that are usually segues or sort of like little interstitial bits of noise or yeah. sort of m m minor length songs, and we're playing them all. So we need a piano, and we need uh, to figure out a simple but effective synthesizer setup, and. Uh, we have some auxiliary percussion elements that we're bringing in. Fuck yes, and so, man! So, so, so the idea is huge, but we we're also we're also uh, wrestling with the fact that if we had our typical crew, which is at its, you know, which is normally the same size as the band, we normally have four or five crew, right? Yeah. We're trying to do this with no extra hands because our sound guy's got he's going to have his hands busy. Yeah. Uh, and so. This is a test. This is going to be a test on how much we can do with a very limited window of preparation, and with only the production materials that we have, which is we. I think we we have we have a, a handful of things. So yeah, hopefully everything works. I mean, that's honestly that's it because the day the the the, uh, the performance day is ninety nine percent set up and one percent performance. You know, it's yeah. it's gonna. It's going to be crazy, um, and I think the thing—the thing that, like, kind of in the back of my mind the whole time with this is that the thing, the 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 most one of the most critical elements of a Baroness live show will not be present, and that's the audience. I mean, I, I in a non-romantic, non-rose-tinted glasses way, I, I've always referred to our the audience as like the fifth member of the band because they drive us to play better and in a handful of rare rare situations they've actually they've actually disliked us to the point where i don't think i think we actually play worse <laughs> uh, you know honestly it's it's like the the audience at a Barona show is is really this like this like amplification mechanism yeah like we'll, we're going to do as we're going to do always on stage as well as we possibly can if if this crowd joins us on that ride they're going to uh, unlock another 25% of what we're capable of that we we just don't have we don't we, it requires the audience so i, I think mm. my uh, any like anxieties that i have about it are the fact that the thing that normally provides me with some comfort and some extra reflected i don't know it's it's a weird to talk about this energy thing because it sounds yeah. very wage but no 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 i'm with you on this entirely and and you know this like you see what it, you see what a group 
what a group mentality, like a crowd mentality yeah. does. And it elevates, elevates, elevates. We're not really used to being uh, seen when the audience isn't there. You know, that's usually that's usually an intimate time for us to work through things. So yeah. to try to find this middle ground, I think, is going to be an interesting thing. And, I, you know, I, I, hope it, I hope it goes well. Can I ask, like, <laughs> is the buzz of... The, the 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 replacement of the audience not being there the fact that while you've been having your weekly meetings and sending files and shit that's not as romantic as looking into the whites of each other's eyes as you play these songs like right do, do, which like, we've only discussed the first time a right week ago, you know what I mean? yeah uh, and the the decision to play um golden gray in full like i back you with what you're saying with the the live show the first time i saw your band was on the red album when i was still back home in england at king's cross water rats with kyle lesser was oh, a, what? Among the water rats yeah, yeah. was a yeah. fucking good time and all the way from oh. there to where like out here at the wilton for my for me like seeing you you guys deaf heaven and Zilanada, like representing a sea change for creative heavy music being pl being played in bigger venues and making that standpoint, is picking Gold and Grey part of pushing forward where contemporary songwriting should be within the walls of heavy music? There's so many great bands out there at the moment, just desperate to find ears. Um, like, what was the decision to to keep it current and keep it just doing Golden Grey? Because as you say, you've never done an album in full before. Well, I I would love to say that we had a, a had a beautiful discussion about those <laughs> uh, those kinds. Of, we we really it, it it's really like kind of gutted us this year that we can't promote and play the record that we just recorded or that, right. that it came out like over a year ago. But yeah. Uh, we didn't feel like we had, I mean, we, there's no way by the end of this year that we will feel like we have played it enough. Yeah. You know, we, we were we were very much looking forward to hundreds of shows on this record, and the fact that we get now get one effectively was like, I mean, it, it was kind of like a shoe in because otherwise we would have we would have really like built up a set list like we normally do. And it kind of seemed like, uh, like with this event, like maybe we just risk everything and just do all these things, all these new things and really try to like, just kind of go over the top with them, the workload and the, the, the complexity of the material itself mm. um, rather than try to, readapt what we know works on a stage with an audience for this newer environment yeah. so it's kind of, you know it's, i guess i guess in summation a little bit of column a a little bit of column b yeah uh you know it, it's it is it's extremely frustrating to have had so many shows booked that where we were going to play these songs and yeah. to it and not to and to know that that those shows are never going to happen uh and that whenever we are playing shows again it's very likely we'll have all sorts of new stuff to play and we'll be out of the you know we'll be out of the tour cycle as they call it um so so there was that but also always the subtext always is that whatever the last thing we recorded was the thing we think is the best and the thing is the, it is the most contemporary for us and is the thing we're most excited about playing so it's our duty to play this music that we've made for an audience. And it's, it's, it's exciting to get opportunities, however they present themselves, for us to play something that for some people seems a bit, a, a little bit left of center for what's, you know, yeah. whatever contemporary thing is. You know, like, like uh, there is a... There was a status quo for heavy rock, yeah. metal, whatever it is. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that we're a metal band. I don't know that we're a rock band. I don't know what. I don't know what the name for the band is. But I understand that what we do sometimes comes off as off kilter, or uh, there's a element of something that, that that's bizarre to some people. For me, it's yeah. like, it's all like, oh, well, this is this is just the way I write music, you know. Um, 
But I think that Def Heaven tour, like specifically, was a re was really really amazing because we're not Baroness and Def Heaven. Just look at YouTube comments or Instagram or wherever wherever you go to find negative shit. It's easy to find dissenters and people who don't, you know, that maybe they maybe we're just not their taste. Uh, but we both have been clawing our way up yeah. for such a long time, and and I say clawing, but what I mean is we're just we just won't we won't bend to the will of the industry. It seems like a better. I mean, it seems so obvious to me. I don't. I don't understand how nobody. No, there are. I don't understand that there aren't people who get this. But that's what this style of music is. It's about pushing back, right? Yeah. So yeah. when Sabbath comes out, and they're they're people. They thought they were like a blues rock band, but really they were the genesis of heavy metal. Yeah. And then. Flash forward, you know, decades later, when the if you were a modern band and you only take the sound of Sabbath and play it, you're like a retro rock band, you know, and it's not, mm -hmm. there's nothing interesting. So sometimes it gets in, we get into this like inception level, folding the steel back and forth to make it stronger by by pushing back against the thing that forged us to begin with, you know what mm. I mean? Um, I? And so I, th so I think the Death Heaven tour really was like proof to me on a on a small scale that bands like us can punch above our weight class, and can we can sway the hearts and minds of people who otherwise are on one oh six whatever home of modern rock you know drivel. Is it country? Is it rock and roll? Is it hip hop? I can't tell. They all sound the same, and they're all they're all you know. Th there's there's this thing that was happening in in you know in the heavy rock world that was like completely disinteresting to me it was like the same reason i got into like punk when hair metal was dying because hair metal sucked <laughs> and and like even at that time i was kind of like metal sucks i just want to you know i was like I, I came up at the right time where like kurt yeah. cobain had his influence on me and i was like oh shit i can play music because i'm it's work for me to play tons of stuff it's work for me to play guitar solo so i just want to make noise i just want to hit my guitar and i want to write big timeless songs at the same time so I, i'm like i'm never gonna sway from that i just have to yeah. like constantly reevaluate what's happening around me to see if i have any objections with status quo i'm gonna point them out as well as i can through our music which is really convoluted but why not yeah. well, we all the time the world now well the thing is like I, th this is like literally why i came to america was because I feel like this is where influence lives and there's all this great art that isn't being served. So a tour like that, when, even when it was announced, I was like, that, that's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. the, like, I think I listen to those bands that are like more underground than us. They're, they're like even more thrilling. You yeah, know like, what I mean? Impe well, Imperial Triumphant is my record this year. That album is fucking unreal, man. Oh, it's like, unreal. And the thing, the thing that blows my mind that I wanted to kind of further on this is when you look at the top of the festival bills, not the bands that are second or third from the top, the bands that are at the absolute top, every one of them were not playing music that was in vogue when they broke. Pick them. Oh. Like, you, have, you haven't even got to go to, like, Faith No More. Like, you can pick Corn, right? At the time <laughs> of, of fucking... I'm not going to pick Corn, but you, you yeah, can Yeah, but I will, I, <laughs> I will pick Corn, right? Like, even someone like that, when the status quo was what it was in the, in the early to mid-90s, that was different to that. Everything is a, a reaction to that. My feeling Talk is that rock music is chaos, so why any artist wouldn't want to just pick up their instrument and write for themselves or and to a certain extent their audience and not for a fucking algorithm mate it breaks my heart i know man it breaks my heart too okay so we're kindred spirits on that on that note and i think you know i think the thing i think the important thing there and i think the thing that stops a lot of people from doing that is the anxiety and fear surrounding what happens if you make a mistake and if something doesn't work? Well, I got news for everybody. No matter how well you're doing, you're going to do something that doesn't work. So you might as well do the thing that you love and let that thing fail so at least you can defend what you didn't, you weren't successful doing, you know? And that's, 
I think like engaging in a healthy amount of risk taking, well, maybe even an unhealthy amount of risk taking on a regular basis, because I don't think of things that I do as risks typically. Yeah. I see them in retrospect as being wildly risky or intrepid at times. And, you know, these are the things that divide people and get people talking and, and get the conversation going. And look, if something we do is a conversation starter, then we we're doing the right thing in, mm. in some parts, you know, and if the audience doesn't completely abandon us, then we're definitely doing the right thing. You know, it's, it's like for every, every music, musical artist out there within the parameters of the music that you make and what you are physically creatively capable of making, you can always be creatively engaged with your art. You can always inspire yourself. You can always drive your bandmates and your bandmates can always drive you. And the things that are the most frightening, musically speaking, uh, to get into typically for me as a listener are the most, uh, exciting things to listen to. And then, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the outside of the box bands. And you're right. Half of them are, half of them are top of the bill these days, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, if like you look I at when it started, I mean, you don't have to go further than Beatles or stones for that, you know? Yeah. Um, and, it, and yeah. you know, or Floyd, yeah. or Fight or Savage, No More, or yeah, like no or yeah. Sonic Youth, Dinosaur Junior, Nirvana. Like you got it. How was Nirvana the biggest band in the world? Like literally, went from sub pop to knocking Michael Jackson off of number one. Like yeah. wild, or and that Metallica. Uh, yeah, or Metallica, because who thought a metal band was going to be the biggest pop band? Yeah. Like fucking like but I'm in, I'm in guys yeah. I'm in dude you know I, I live mean? I live brilliant I want to hear it yeah you know? I live I live just off of Hollywood Boulevard right and I walk past Jane's Addiction having a fucking star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame it's fucking yeah. it's wild remember, but that's you know what's crazy to me is that there was a time in the nineties when Jane's Addiction was too corporate for me <laughs> right <laughs> right and, and I'm like I listen back now and I'm like nah no no this shit's so cool. Because the top of the rock charts now is, uh, yeah, it's like the, a neutral gray. I don't. I just don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah, it works. It works. It really ties the room together. No, it, it doesn't. I, don't... I I argue it doesn't. Like, if if it worked, then all of us wouldn't be drowning, right? Like, if 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 it worked, more people out there like rock music than are currently listening to rock music because of what we're putting forward. In my opinion, um, Golden Grey though. Just last question because I I know I've taken up so much of your time already. Like the this is a fun. This is a fun. I haven't done interviews in ages. First awesome. Of all. And this awesome. is fun. Also, so oh, good. Thank you. Right. So, Golden Gray's production felt like a hot potato. Um, I'm did, aware of that. <laughs> like, so, I'm hyper yeah. so, so, yeah, right. Okay, see, I didn't know. Like, I don't know if it's my little friend circle that it felt controversial to or the outside world. So, um, is this an opportunity for if people didn't dig the Sonic sound of golden gray actually what was the thinking behind the production first if you don't mind me asking before we before i ask the the bigger question well you get to get to get the, the full answer you gotta ask the full band because i'm i think it sounds fucking awesome yeah so to me it was like does this sound cool does this sound different does it sound new does this push the expectations does this work with the band does this subvert the norm does this further the music? Does this inspire new ideas? Like, in all cases, the answer was exactly how I want it to be. Uh, I think, you know, I, I think it's, it's, I think the response is justified. But, um, first of all, I would never, I would never hope that uh, we would play a show that would mask something that we did that wasn't, you know, well received in the past. That's not right. That's okay. Just, that's not how I operate. That's not, I'm not trying to make excuses. No, it's or good to know. Or ever. It's like it's a very uncompromising uh, side of me. I'm. I will compromise on so many things, but in terms of how I want the art to be presented, it's. It's you know. I have a there. There's a vision. The band has a vision. We're trying to you know we're trying to do what we can to see that vision come to life. Um, but I also. 
think that uh, that we are not trying, we have never made an active attempt and never will make an active attempt to create music that creates a barrier between us and a group of people. So yeah. uh, whether it's production or lyrics or, or uh, the aesthetics or any, you know, any of the talking points on Baroness, like they're all designed to draw people in and create creative challenges and get people to feel something. Um, definitely not trying to make everybody feel like it's a hot potato for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. um, you know, I, th I think what this, I think what, the, what choosing to do the record is it's, it's really is like back to this sort of internal thing. Like we need to play it, you know, like there's, there's, there's a need that, that stands outside of our need to play a show that stands outside our need to play in front of an audience that stands outside our need to, you know, remain financially viable. Yeah. We just need to like, once we started, once we had the idea that we were going to play the record, and I mean, we, I think we had five or six rehearsals in total for it, maybe seven rehearsals total for the, for this, it became apparent after like the first run through or two that a, it's tip, it's a difficult, it's a very difficult thing to undertake mm. Two, we can't actually do this to any of our other records. It's simultaneously the most, one of the most complex pieces of music I've ever written or I've ever been part of writing. And also the only one that I that we as a band can play the entirety of, and um, that three the third thing is, it's it is possible, <laughs> like it, it is it's kind of fun like it's it's like running a marathon a little bit like it's painful at the end, mm. it's painful at the halfway point, it's painful fucking five minutes in. Uh, because it's it's not, and I'm talking like physically. It's a physically yeah. the most fucking demanding thing to play this one because it's you have to balance complexity and density with precision and accuracy, with feeling, uh, with improvisation, with unexpected things that always happen. You know, you have to balance the most intense, the most intense way that we play, immediately bookended by two of the most tender songs that we play yeah and it's it's so it's fun it's like it's like a it's like a real it's like a real real marathon it's very it's very difficult and when we finish every time we've like finished playing the set through it's it's like all right guys whew, yeah eat a and breathe <laughs> i mean it's I, I, and the the funny thing is it's so it's such a complex piece of music if you look at it from the whole that I think it would take us. I think it would take us six months to prepare it in a way that we could play it perfectly. I think what we've done is we've gotten it to a point where I'm excited because I think there are going to be plenty of unexpected things. You know, I anticipate mm. surprising myself in many, in a variety of ways throughout the performance. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, uh, and it's and furthermore, it's something I, I always maintained. Uh, through all, all of our lineups that we would never do. I have maintained up until this point that we would never take a show out on the road that was just the record in the correct sequence with all the stuff there. Mm. Because why go to see a show if you if you already know everything? Why yeah. go see it? But yeah. this but this is this presented an interesting opportunity because we had to put it together quickly, we had to do it DIY, and we had to uh, we had an opportunity to play something like this without it feeling like uh, too much of a gimmick or or anything like if we wanted a gimmick that worked we would just play all the hits you know <laughs> yeah for real this, this is this no but i'm saying this is yeah. this is like this is a real adventure for the band as well um because we, we didn't we ne because as i said we never we didn't tour on this record uh we didn't headline on this record at all so we haven't gotten That's a wild. chance to like let these songs blossom and uh i think it's i think it's an awesome this is an awesome opportunity to start uh, looking at performance in a, in a different way and, and the way that we structure things and the way that pr we present them, we have an opportunity here to do it in a different, in a different way. Uh, and I don't, I have zero clue what that's going to feel like. And that's, I don't know. I mean, I can't tell you last time I didn't know what was going to happen. 
Honestly, I, I mean that that in itself, like as a even as someone that is a hundred percent going to be part of that stream, like yeah. like that that feels exciting. Like, were you? Would you describe yourself as a self conscious band, John? Like, if you if you're sat there and when it comes to like the idea, because I'm with you, right? It got to a stage about two years ago where it felt like every fucking band was doing an album in full and I was like even when it was announced and it was albums I've been listening to all my life that I was kind of excited about there was a bit of me that was like okay um is it not wanting it's, to be I, that I, the idea of that as a tour as a like a as a mechanism to tour is not exciting hmm. uh because I mean there's I could pick it apart in a million ways but one one more obvious way is like Okay, say you play your record. Say your say your record maxes out a CD and it's seventy minutes long. The audience still wants to hear more, and so you've got to play encore songs, or mm -hmm. you've got or your album's only forty five minutes or fifty minutes long, and it's not a full set worth of material. So you put you put some stuff at the beginning, you put some stuff at the end. Then it's not the album. Mm -hmm. Then it's a weird mixtape where somebody gets lazy for eighty five percent of it. You know, it's oh these are the cool these are. There are cool songs at the beginning. These are their best songs at the end. And then, yeah, here's just an album. I didn't feel like rearranging it. Like, then yeah. it's not the album. It's not like an evening with that album. It's an evening with the uh, with a playlist that includes that entire album. And, I, and like, that's just one way for me to look at it. I don't, It's it just doesn't, I like going deep on, on I like playing, you know, obviously, like, we, we have some songs that are kind of standards for us. But we do try to, with every tour and with every show to try to keep some variety in there and play some songs that people don't expect to hear or that they haven't heard because some of those songs are to me like as a, as the musician has to play them they're kind of gems because they come up they're really exciting to play or they really they, they feel really genuine to play and i know that i know that it's not the song that people listen to first when they go to that record so yeah. i think that i think is you know we we sort of like treat our sets at, you know more like a jam band might do it or more like a band with more albums or a much wider catalog would do it we try to play some songs you don't expect because it's a show it's a performance yeah. and i don't want anybody in our sh in our show to ever know everything that's going to happen however really? with golden gray i don't know what's going to happen so it's, but... it's 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 still there it's still there and i think it's i think there will i think that in an age of music that sometimes, you know, and I'm talking about, I'm kind of like focusing in on a genre here, but in an age of music where uh, being fragile or being in, intimate or being exposed or being vulnerable is not at all a popular thing, mm. I think that that we some we sometimes have no choice but to we because of some of our songs because of some of like. Either, either the complex songs that are just really almost impossible to play the way that they're recorded or because some of those songs are just stripped down and, and extremely intimate songs like mm. we have to embrace that and we have to we have to use something that I don't see in our field a ton of stuff being done with I mean the, the bands that I love in heavy music all have that aspect to them mm. it's just they're not the dime a dozen bands you know yeah so I think I think that for for a, a streaming thing to willfully engage in that vulnerability is it keeps it keeps the message of this band if there is one the philosophy of this band intact. Mm. It's not just do what's easy and do what's strong. It's it's do what's compelling, do what's what means something to you. You know, and it speaks to volumes to what how you feel about the album tracks because the thing is like as an audience member I've seen some bands play um their albums in full like metallica doing the black album in full uh in europe right and the thing that stood out to me as someone that like you know they're my favorite band um I like fucking it was seeing struggle within and the fucking songs that i haven't seen a million times that was the exciting part of it the flip side to that is i've seen a band let's call them mean bay and they played their album Wookie in full, right? And did not give a shit. It was boring because the, like, the passion has got to be there for track 10, track 11 on a record, yeah. right? Yeah, and it, it absolutely. And it's, it's so... 
it's so easy in any field, in any field, but especially in creative fields, it's so easy to do what you know works. What you've seen proven, it's so easy to take your limited data set as a musician, your flawed data set, because you're seeing it from first person perspective, but you go, okay, like, you know, we go, okay, shock me, march the sea, yeah. bone, <laughs> this curve. I mean, I could build like a great set yeah. of just heavy hitters that, that I know, I know the impact. I've seen what they do. Yeah. So when all these other things are like gone or when, when it's different because it's in a, it's in a, a room that's not a venue and there's no audience there. Well, I know the impact is going to reach through the, you know, digital ether and, uh, you know, affect everybody in a way that, that I can somewhat predict. Um, but that, I don't know, that feels like that would be sort of an easy way out that wasn't necessarily exciting. Like if you saw us play our favorite three songs from every record, most of our fans, most of our fan base who's familiar with our music is going to go, but I've seen all these songs a million times, you know, mm -hmm. and they look comfortable, they look confident. But what's the point? Of, what's the point of the performance then? Is it just is it just to showcase the best music that you have? I, you can make a case for that, sure. I, it's just not like a very it's not a very baroness thing to do, you know. Yeah. What's mo I think what's more interesting is to, uh, you know, and and just realize that we predicate this whole thing on the fact that we just really wanted to play our record that we just recorded. You know, it's Gina, it's Gina's first record with Baroness, and why wouldn't we play all the songs that she wrote? with us you know what i mean why wouldn't Fuck we yeah. just yes yeah four of us, let's play the songs we have authorship over let's play the songs that we own let's claim them let's begin let's play some of these i'm playing piano on a couple songs and i have literally never played in front of anybody except my bandmates and i'm not a, i'm not a i'm not a player i'm just i just write i can write songs on using piano so i'm terrified you know because it's because it's it's like uh I don't know. It'd be like me playing drums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like even the visual, even the visual, John. Have you sat at a piano? That's why I was like, "Fuck, yeah." And so, so like, I, I, I like, I like the idea because from the get go, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't have, I don't have that that kind of um, effortless confidence. That, oh, I know, I got it. Don't worry, guys. We've done this a million times. This is how that change goes, and we'll get there. This is like full of, um, it's full of a weird, prickly kind of tense magic for me. That that like I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to play. I'm really excited to play these songs because once because here's the other thing. Here's a simple fact about it: is this is a one, this is one night of our lives, and if we do three things we've never done before, then those are then from every step forward from here on out, we've done those things and they can now be part of our show. So effectively we're sort of beta testing a new way of presenting the music in, yeah. you know, minor yeah. move, yeah. minor move. But as, as the guy that's, as, as one of as 25% of the people that have to do it, it's like, it feels major to me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I've always been about, like, even I've been, been, been a band for a long time, been playing music and touring for a ton. Um, the fact, I'm, I'm always, always excited about doing something that sounds hard uh, and sounds like something that, if it goes even a little bit all right, it's something I can develop, uh, you know. And we've been talking about how to get the... We've been. We really have spent a long time uh, over, you know, over, over the past several years, especially talking about how we can bring some of our, some of the quieter songs that we have to the stage, in a genuine way. You know, where five years ago, you know, Pete and I were talking about taking some of our, pu pulling some of our acoustic songs on stage, and we we took a couple stabs at it. We, you know, we we didn't. It was like the first thing was I don't feel I feel like if we just like broke out acoustic guitars and plugged them in. Yeah, it's just gonna be a huge jump for people to see us all of a sudden with acoustics. And what if we don't know how? Like, what if it's like a what if it's awkward? Because we're not stand up, plug in acoustic players. We're sit down quietly and play acoustic players. So it was like we maybe we can do like a bluegrass sort of thing and build a mic, but we never got around to it. In more recent years, you know, Gina and Nick and I have we have ha we have had our hand forced on a couple of occasions to play full sets acoustically 
Like we played Hellfest two years ago, and Seb uh, had some like really difficult things. He had he had to leave tour for a couple, for like a week, yeah. go back to the US, uh, and take care of some personal matters. While he did that, we were unwilling to cancel these big, wonderful shows that with these festivals that we love. So we we ended up playing an acoustic, an all acoustic or all stripped down acoustic set with a, it was like a Rhodes acoustic guitar electric guitar, but no drums, no beats, nothing loud for an hour long in front of like 12,000 people at Hellfest. And it, it wasn't, it was like, it was beautiful and very nerve wracking. And when we, when we came on that stage, you know, as like overwhelmed as we were by that, it was clear to us that we can develop this aspect of the band. And so, you know, so we, so we continued to write, songs like that and they ended up on golden gray and now we're you know at another situ we're in another situation where we've got to come out because we told we said let's do golden gray so yeah. we're going to do it the way it, it is so we forced our own hand into making us perform for the first time in a new fashion or a slightly new fashion and um i i'm thrilled by the likelihood that this it's it's the beginning of that of that uh tangent for us that we can now you know hopefully moving forward develop as as a as a part of our everyday stage show assuming there's a stage in our future yeah yeah, yeah got you but the, the the fearlessness is what i love like the the okay we're gonna do it and it's the what comes out afterwards because yeah. we know that you've been writing remotely is it mm -hmm. cheeky of me to ask can you record remotely Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I have, I have a, a robust studio situation in my home studio. Gina and Nick and Sebastian also. We're also all of us have uh, to greater and lesser extents, but we have engineering. We have background in engineering. I mean, we've been musicians long enough that we know yeah. how to record us. Period. Uh, but it, but we we've, we've been producing our co-producing our records since. Yeah. day one as well so it's not it's not an unfamiliar thing it's a, it's an exciting thing i mean oh, we've always had an active interest in mm. uh, in the engineering aspect and no. production aspect of our music the, the main reason that i asked is because i've got mates that can't go to studios that have got records <laughs> written that literally can't get into somewhere where they would ideally like to record so i mm -hmm. think what i was kind of surreptitiously asking is oh, is, <laughs> is work rec uh, underway <laughs> recording the new baroness record wait say that again i said is work underway recording the new baroness record i don't know is it <laughs> 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 that's good enough for me that's good enough yeah. for me i speak fluent musician <laughs> um Mate. No, I mean we're we're we since in one form or another since March we've been we've been working on our record yeah. and uh, it uh, quite honestly it remains to be seen exactly how it's done but I think it goes without saying that we're not going into a studio yeah. first of all like in this situation like the the difference in finances between self recording and paid recording is mo monumental it's massive so if we can why wouldn't we mm, absolutely absolutely um the stream is happening september the 10th i couldn't wish you the best of luck more with it john thanks so much for your time today if it's all right um i'm just going to share screen with you and if we could watch the take, uh, not the take my bones away, the throw me an anchor video together, I would just like to talk about the uh, the song through with you. Uh, just while I'm setting that up, um, Tourniquet, when you did that um, remotely, uh, apart from one another, yeah. Um, how how was how was that to put together? Like was uh, like because the stream makes sense. It's it might not have the audience, but it's the four of you on a stage. Whereas, totally. whereas that must have felt even more alien. It was, yeah. I mean, if I'm being honest, I hope we don't have to do remote recording videos. I hope we don't have to do live streams for the rest of our lives. The exciting aspect, the reason we got into playing music was touring. You know, the, this yeah. band is predicated and built around that so everything we do until 
the first tour date that we have is an effort to get to that tour. You know what I mean? It's it's built. It's it's an effort to build the band str- in, into a stronger touring entity, to hone our craft, to write better music, to record better music, so that when the situation is right and for us to responsibly do what it is that we do best, that we get in front of that audience again in a responsible way. Yeah. When all the of this, right. yeah, when it's safe for us, when it's safe for our audience, when it's safe for our crew, when it's safe for our families, when it's safe for everybody else, that's that's the day one of the new normal for us. Mm-hmm. Up until then, we are training. We are hardening our musical capabilities. We are strengthening and uh, broadening our creative capabilities. And we're just, yeah, we're just making ourselves better so that when it's over, we come out the band that we want to be. Well, like, I would also like to say on behalf of, like, the most normal thinking people, like, it was super cool, the message you put at the end of that video as well. I I like that you're taking the time to put that message out as well as doing musical stuff. So, let me play it and let me start this underway. So, um, you have played... Let's listen to the song. Uh, it's just listening to the song. It'll just be on in the oh. background while we're talking. Um, so, you have played this live. What has been the vibe like with Throw Me an Anchor Live? How has it progressed from record to stage? Well, we changed. The, we had to change the key of the song because, I, I mean, I'll, I'll preface this by saying that the music for the song was written at a pretty early stage in, in Golden Grey, and the music was written and basically finished uh, or we had worked out the bulk of the vocal content and Baroness had kind of have two, two types of songs songs that are based on vocal uh, this song the, the, the way the song is constructed should be more vocal based but in fact it was more musical and it's got some strange music it is singly and most definitely by a very wide margin the most difficult song I've ever had to write lyrics and vocals for 100 what made it so uh, the tempo the key but those aren't really the real thing it yeah no I, mean, I think the key I, well actually I think the key was a big thing because I sing the song it's like I'm the, what I sing is a melody in the song. Sometimes uh, it, it's really high for me, given the amount of vocal energy I got to put into it. So I'm just gonna get like pecky on you. But yeah. like, in order to present that much vocal energy at that at that volume, at that uh, dynamic range, it's really difficult. So I'm right at I'm right at the top of my range almost the entire song, and I barely breathe. So when we recorded it in our studio environment, you don't always uh, double check your breathing. And I should have, uh, because first of all, it took a week of Gina and I just constantly screaming, constantly getting our heads wrapped around how to make the song before we had this version of the song. And by the time we had the vocals track, we were, well, the last thing we were thinking was, oh, let's check this in reality to see if it if it's performable. Mm. So when we took it out on, on tour, uh, it kind of fell flat about the first week we played it because it was tuned up too much. Mm. And the difficult thing was, it's too high, but our guitars are tuned so low that it didn't seem like we could tune them down any further to adjust for my voice. Uh, ultimately, we did we tune it down to uh, let's see if it's two down five steps fuck it out wow yeah so it's like it's kind of like the it's kind of like playing a bass guitar <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, it's tuned down so low for Gina that she has to capo so that she can play the lead line on it and fuck. it not sound like a baritone guitar yeah so it was it was weird but once we found that out once we found out how easy it was to sing in the lower key it's all stuff, you know what I mean? Mm. But it's got it's got this weird middle section, uh, the the emergency part, 
it, in, it's like in 15 4 or something like that and the bass only plays one note so we we had like put all this which gene and i p- tried to play put all this melody into it and what we ended up doing was we ended up building these chords and layering these dense chords that uh they they don't they're they aren't there's so many notes in the chord eventually that it's just not a chord anymore it's just like it's sort of like you're playing every note on a piano at once and just banging it in rhythm <laughs> uh, so it's sort of it's like a, it's very very weird how the song was created the, uh the distortion on the drums as well like yeah. it just it, it gives it that extra layer of chaos when there's there's so much rich beauty in baroness music it's nice to be slapped in the teeth like that every once in a while yeah i think we felt with this well i think we felt with this song uh that we needed something that kind of sat <laughs> we I, I should also know that we we were completely out of our minds the whole time we were writing this because we thought this was a normal song we thought this was like <laughs> yeah the middle yeah. This is like shock me of uh, Golden Grey. <laughs> it's not, man. It's, it's just it's just because the chorus has chords that I can name. Uh, the chorus is like a it's like a country song. It's like G C or G D C A minor E minor. It's like yeah. only normal chords, but the rest of it's just bonkers. Chaos. Bonkers. Yeah, it's, ca- it's complete chaos. I cannot wait for the stream, man. September the 10th, make sure you get your tickets. Um, we've only been a channel two months, John, so your presence here is so, so welcome. I didn't even get the chance to talk to you about art, so we'll make sure we do this again in the next couple of weeks once the stream is done and everything, man. Yeah, circle back. We can talk, we can talk, shit, on the, uh, we can talk shit on the performance and we can start talking about art. Fuck yeah. yeah. Thank you, circle- John. Thanks so much for your time, I- I- mate. I'll yeah. <laughs> see you in a bit, mate. Thanks, bye. Right. Later. Don't forget to like and share this video and join me on Twitch every Tuesday, Friday and Saturday for guest hangouts, new music votes, tier lists, band specific competitions, weekly merch roundups and much, much more. That's twitch.tv forward slash mosh talks. Find the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you on notfest.com for all of the latest news, features and much more from the worlds of rock, metal and beyond. And